Ascension tide sees the great return, just as the word emerges from eternity and is given voice and expression as Christ becomes flesh in that wondrous prologue to St. John's Gospel, so the God who came down, down to earth from heaven, makes his return in mysterious or ineffable fashion in the words of St. Leo the Great. The Old Testament has several stories that prefigure the ascension of Jesus, stories of ascension that take place in dreams or visions. Think of Jacob's ladder reaching up from earth to heaven. But most memorably, there is the drama of Elijah ascending to heaven in a whirlwind on a chariot of fire, pulled by horses of fire. At the time of Jesus, people thought the earth was like a great table standing on pillars, and above the table was the firmament, a sort of dome containing the the sky, the sun and the stars with heaven beyond that dome. And therefore it was only natural for the writers to describe Jesus being taken or carried up into heaven. In the Gospels, Mark and John say nothing about the Ascension. St Matthew records a final conversation with the disciples on the mountain in Galilee, but he doesn't tell us what happened next whilst St. Luke seems to record all his Easter stories as happening on one day. Only in the Acts of the Holy Apostles are we given uh, a time frame that shapes the church's year, placing the Ascension 40 days after Easter and then Pentecost 10 days after that, which we celebrate, of course, next Sunday. What might we learn from the Ascension? Well, first of all, surely Jesus stopped because he'd finished. Love's redeeming work is done. It is finished. Words from the cross. God's purposes are being worked out, whether we live a short life or a long one. It is finished. Jesus is now with the Father and the Spirit, and Jesus is also within us, in our hearts too. And if we hope and expect thither to ascend, if this eternity of love is our home, then we must needs remember that here we have no abiding city. Yet we cling on to the here, and we try and build an abiding city here and now. We grab for things and try to store them up in what could be described as the panic of now. Perhaps because many people think that is all there is here and now. And in some senses, of course, reality can only ever be now in the present moment. The reality of now should be engaged with and not avoided. Yes, of course, certainly we engage in now, indeed we seek to build the kingdom of God, the God of peace, the God of justice, the God of mercy, his loving kindness, but there is more than just now. For God and for humanity in which God has cloaked himself, there is an eternal now. So we resist the panic of here and now, the desperation, for here we have no abiding city. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, 
unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Saviour Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the epistle of St. James, beginning at the seventh verse. The end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 26th verse. When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. 
But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the cycle of prayer on Anglican Communion Sunday, we pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury and all primates and bishops for the Anglican Consultative Council the Secretary General, Dr. Josiah Idowu Fearon, for the Anglican Communion Office staff in London and the UN offices in Geneva and New York. We pray in thanksgiving for the birth of Herbert Andrew Mauro Rutzuti on the 16th of May at £10.06. Congratulations to Fran and Hannah and his brother Rupert. We hold in prayer and in thanksgiving all medical staff and key workers who care for others with risk to themselves, asking that God be close to all who are anxious and afraid the world over. In our parish, we give thanks for all volunteers responding generously to the needs of neighbours and the vulnerable and isolated. Pray for those who remain homeless on the streets. We continue in prayer for prisoners and prison officers in places served by the London Prisons Mission, for more volunteers to come forward for this work. Also for Father Alan McCormack, Dean of Goodenough College and his community of around 400 students. Bless the sick and the frail, and especially we pray for John Healy, Vera Brackenridge, Paul Berreau, Susan Stenson, Aori Lees, Katie Morris, Father Christopher Tuckwell, Canon Jane Sinclair, David and Mary Brockett, Linda, Tomasz Kuszarski, Father Bill Scott, Chris Boyd, Anne Phillips and Wendy Curls. We pray for those God has called into his heavenly presence, that they may know his light, peace and love. Especially we pray for the recently departed, for Father Bo Brandy, Jeff Coombs, Peter Goodwin, Elizabeth Martin-Jones, June Mary Cornell, William Wright and Patricia Morris-Jones. Also, we pray for those with anniversaries at this time, and among them, Joe Kodjdik. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, 
which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness and peace, and so to, to direct all kings and rulers, that under them thy people may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all who are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to this punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by thy life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Especially we pray for Sarah, Bishop of London, and the London College of Bishops. Guide and prosper, we pray thee, those who are labouring for the spread of thy gospel among the nations, and enlighten with thy spirit all places of education and learning, that the whole world may be filled with the knowledge of thy truth. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all of them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we commend to thy gracious keeping, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them everlasting light and peace. And here we give thee most high praise and hearty thanks for Mary, the Virgin Mother of thy Son, Saint George the Martyr, and all thy saints, who have been the chosen vessels of thy grace and lights of the world in their several generations. And we pray thee that rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, we may be partakers with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins, and deliver you from all evil, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord, who, after his most glorious resurrection, manifestly appeared to all his apostles, and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction, for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, According to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We behold the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for thee, and his blood which he shed for thee.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.